Welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be discussing mastering music for film and video. We'll consider how an engineer should prepare music masters that they're sending to other video creators, as well as the right audio levels when you're exporting a video if you're the video creator. We'll also cover how to export stems from a mix and how to route a stem mastering session in a way that will ultimately best accommodate a video creator. So stick around for the full video, but first, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you gotta do is set up this short account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. First, let's talk about how to properly export stems from a mix for stem mastering. Step one, open your mix session, and if you haven't already, organize your tracks based on the instrument type. So all of the drums go together, the guitars or synths, and so on. Step two, once your tracks are organized, highlight them and change their output from the stereo output to a bus. If you're already using buses for some of your effects, then just choose the next available bus. Step three, with this bus created, change the name of it so that you don't confuse it with other buses. So for example, if you're sending all of your percussive tracks to this bus, name this drum stem or something similar. Step four, if you have effects buses, like a reverb auxiliary track or maybe a parallel compression track, you'll need to change their outputs to your drum stem or whatever stem bus you're creating. Now in instances like parallel compression, this method isn't ideal as the compressor will react differently depending on how much signal is being sent to it. And with that in mind, it's best not to send multiple instrument types to a bus compressor or parallel compressor if you want to export your stems. Step five, once all of your routing is complete and you've successfully created your stem auxiliary tracks, solo these tracks and export them one by one. One more really important thing to note is that you should never have any processing on your stereo output when you're exporting stems. Next, let's talk about how to perform stem mastering for video. To perform stem mastering, the processing used should not be performed on the stereo output. Instead, it's going to be used on each stem. In short, add your compression, equalization, saturation, limiting, and so on to each stem. Process each stem with the goal of having the full master sound as great as it can. Well, once you're satisfied with the sound of the full master, solo each stem and export them one by one, as well as export a full version of the song. Now this way, a video producer can create multiple versions of a song to suit the needs of a scene or a particular part of the video. Additionally, by processing your stems in this way, they can be recombined to recreate the full stereo master. Now, this allows video producers to create new versions without having to worry about clipping distortion or altering the signal in any way. Next, let's talk about how loud and dynamic should a master be for TV and film. When performing a music stem mastering session for TV and film, it's best to establish a loudness of an integrated negative 14 LUFS to negative 10 LUFS. Now, although the level of the final video will most likely not be this loud, the music itself can be made this loud. How dynamic a music recording mastered for TV and film should be is dependent on the type of project. For example, music mastered for horror movies is often much more dynamic than music mastered for, say, a television broadcast romantic comedy. Now, it truly depends on how the music is going to be used. If the music you're mastering will serve as background music on top of which dialogue is being played, then less dynamic is probably better. The reason being, background music should be consistent and not attract too much attention to itself. If this background music is constantly going up or down in amplitude, it might be distracting and in turn detract from the dialogue or more important foreground audio. But in a horror movie, like the example we provided before, the music will play a key role in building suspense and is going to tie heavily into the visual content. Now in that regard, having a dynamically squashed track would be counter to the goal of the music. If there are no dynamics present, 
then the music's ability to build suspense for the viewer would have been taken away. With that said, how dynamic you make your music master will heavily depend on how it's going to be used. If possible, find out how your project will be used, and if you can't, then find a happy medium for your master's dynamics. Lastly, let's talk about how loud should a final video be. Just to keep things simple, here are the maximum loudnesses of each medium. Netflix is an integrated negative 27 LUFS with a max peak at negative 2 dB true peak. If it's being shown in theaters, you need an integrated negative 27 LUFS with again a max peak at negative 2 dB true peak. If it's on television, an integrated negative 24 LUFS is needed with a max peak at negative 2 dB true peak. And if you're just uploading it to YouTube, you need an integrated negative 15 to negative 13 LUFS with a max peak at negative 2 dB true peak. Now it should be noted that there is a difference between some of these metrics, primarily between YouTube and the other three mediums. Whereas YouTube introduces normalization that will in turn turn down any audio louder than the max integrated LUFS and peak, Netflix, theaters, and television don't do this. In other words, you cannot make your audio louder than the numbers shown for Netflix, theater, and television without being asked to make a revision by the body governing these forms of broadcast. When it comes to YouTube, loudness normalization works in a unique way, whereas other normalization algorithms on other streaming services both turn up and down audio that doesn't meet the mark, YouTube's algorithm only turns audio down. Now, in other words, if your video is too quiet, YouTube will maintain its loudness as is, but if it goes over, it's gonna be turned down. So these are our thoughts on mastering music for film and video, but what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Now, all you need to do is set up this short account, upload the song, and we can take care of the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release new videos every week and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or make a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.